Hey Church, so great to be able to connect with you. We have been looking over the last month at the subject of review, seeing again. And we're going to start looking at a couple of different issues and subjects that are really pertinent to us in this cultural moment. And so today we're going to be looking at how the way we view social justice has changed over this time. As you are very aware, we've been through a season where there is so much that is shown to us on our social media feeds, on the mainstream news feeds, that it can become quite overwhelming. And many things that have needed to be addressed have risen to the surface and so we're going to just spend a few minutes looking at the way that we view social justice now the prophet Micah in the Hebrew scriptures says this God has told you humans what is good and what the Lord requires of you is to do justice notice do justice to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God Martin Luther King said this in his famous I Have a Dream speech. He said, it would be fatal for the nation. And I'm just going to interject in here into the, uh, you know, the immortal words of Martin Luther King Jr. And paraphrase some of these things. So it would be fatal for the nation. But I'm also going to say it'd be fatal for the global church to overlook the urgency of the moment. This sweltering summer of the Negro's legitimate discontent will not pass until there is an invigorating autumn of freedom and equality. 1963 is not an end, but a beginning. And those who hope that the Negro needed to blow off steam and will now be content will have a rude awakening if the nation, and I interject, the global church, returns to business as usual. And there will be neither rest nor tranquility in America or the world until the Negro, and may I just interject again, all those who have suffered under the tyranny of corruption and unjust systems is granted their citizenship, their rights, and treated as the image of God, as treated as the image of Yahweh. The whirlwinds of revolt will continue to shake the foundation of our nation until the bright day of justice emerges. Amazing, powerful words, so much more pertinent given our cultural moment right now and the different things that we are seeing, things that have risen to the surface during this last year. Uh, And when those things have happened, it's been very, very quick for people to jump onto the bandwagon. It's really easy to black out your screen on Instagram. It's very easy to to very quickly become impassioned by the situation that is presented to us in those moments. But how many of you know that justice is far greater than something that we just decide to post about in a moment. Taking the knee is all good and well. Deciding to go out and protest in a moment is all good and well. But the reality is if we are doing that only to then go back to wear our clothing that is made by slaves somewhere in the majority world, take selfies of ourselves on devices that are made in the majority world and it never really changed the way that we choose to live our lives. What are we except the biggest hypocrites? And I say this not as a leader, but as a learner, just like you, that I am just as guilty of jumping on those bandwagons. But it causes us to have to ask the question, why as humans do we care so much about justice? Why why is it so important to us? Well, could it be that the scriptures say right in the very, very beginning that we were created in the image of of God. And it uses the term selim. And selim is a Hebrew term that is more rightly translated as the representatives, the viceroys. We are called to rule and reign, to radar as God's representatives on the earth. And that is ingrained into the DNA of each and every one of us as human beings. But we know, don't we, that we chose not to follow that pattern. And we chose to say to God, we don't want to do it your way. We want to do it our way. And essentially we became 
became our own gods. And when that happened, relationship broke. It broke with God, it broke with ourselves, it broke with one another, and it broke with the earth itself. And everything began to go south. It all began to go wrong in that moment. And so all throughout the scriptures, we see the prophets and they rail against this and they say that we are called to do justice and to act righteously. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't really use that term righteous very often, but it's the Hebrew term zedekah. And zedekah is more about an external activity than simply an internal uh, identity. We think of righteousness as an internal identity. So you don't know when somebody is good, when they do good things. But righteousness is about the way we choose to live out our lives. And the key, the other key term that is always connected with righteousness is the term for justice, which in Hebrew is the term mishpat. So with me, mishpat. It's a great fun word to say. But mishpat is about the idea of not just giving not just giving retributive justice, but also giving restorative justice. Now, if one of my kids comes home and says that they've stolen a bike, I'm not going to be pleased with them. And I'm going to tell, they're going to be in trouble. They're going to be punished in some way for that. They're going to be grounded. But that's not really justice. Justice only happens when we march our kid back with that bike to the person that they've stolen it from and they give back what they have taken. And this is what the church needs to step into together with the nations to be able to see genuine healing come. It's not enough to just recognize the sins of our fathers. We need to repent, change the way we think, change the way that we act. We need to step into that place of identification like Daniel did, like Nehemiah did, like Jesus did when he hung on a cross, his blood dripping into that cursed dust. We need to step into that place and bring back what has been taken. And that's the ministry that you and I have been given. It says in Colossians that through Christ, God is reconciling everything back to its original design. And he is doing that through you, and he's doing that through me. So we need to be people that don't just see and get offended and get wound up by the stuff that we see, but we need to be people that allow that to go right into the core of our DNA, to transform us on the inside so that we begin to do something on the outside that will ultimately bring restoration to the entire planet. The scriptures say that through Jesus, God is making all things new. Let's decide to be a part of that mission and let's bring justice everywhere we go. God bless you.